Welcome to another video in our reactor introduction series. This is probably one of our more advanced videos. And this one will be talking about profiles and printer settings. For the majority of users, they'll just be using the profiles that come with the software and that we've released through the updates. Again, this is found through updates and get newest profiles. Before some of our more advanced user and esoteric models, you may want to alter the settings to your values of material and model specifications. In order to do that, you go to this gearbox icon here under the quality settings. In here, we have the basic and the advanced settings. I'm not going to go through all of these because if you're messing with these settings, you're probably more of an advanced user and you should know what you're doing before you start messing with them. But here in the basic, it's pretty easy to go ahead and change these settings and you have a pretty good guarantee that you're gonna be safe and your print head shouldn't jam and you should be able to get a quality part. Under the global layer thickness, you can change it. Again, you may have seen these in the modifier video of the course draft standard plus fine. And then again, a custom setting here. Again, these values are derivative directly from the nozzle print head size. You can change the infill strength from 30% all the way up to 100, well, down to zero and to 100. The shelf thickness just defines how many contours of solid walls before it starts creating infill. And then that leads us to the infill type. We have linear, crossed, and many other options. Under the advanced settings tab, you're gonna see more settings that you may be familiar with or you may not. For most users, they really probably don't need to mess with this too much. And down at the bottom, you'll find a show expert settings. So if you click this, you have the expert settings tab opens up. Once again, we hide this to show that a user that may be uncomfortable or unfamiliar with changing these settings and what they may actually do to their print may be more hesitant to come in here and make changes. This opens up the printer, the layers, and the support tab, with once again, a myriad of different settings. So you may be asking, well, I haven't seen the temperature. Well, to do that, you need to go into the override material settings. Click here. This is also gonna open up three additional tabs. So we have our printing temperature, our heated bed, and our regular, uh, this should probably always be checked, but then we also have the temperature that you wish the bed to be heated to. On our advanced settings, we have an extrusion, cooling, initial priming, first layer adhesion, and retraction settings, and then under expert, material settings, layers, and speed. We go more in depth than these in our live classroom videos. Now, what's interesting about this is you may notice over here, I've already created a demo profile, and we also have a default profile. The default profile is in bold, and those profiles are the ones that are created by Fusion 3, and they're in bold, and they're, you can't save over them. So you never have to worry that maybe you've made changes to a default profile, you've tried to print, the print failed, and you wish to go back to the default profile. Well, it'll always be here for you. And instead, what you could do is you could save a profile. We'll say demo two. And this will save all the settings that you've created or changed to the default profile for that specific material. Now, as you can see, it's no longer in bold and it's below this line here. This allows you to export these settings to another user that you may be working alongside with, or even to export it to us here at Fusion 3 for any sort of troubleshooting problems. Again, export settings at the top and import settings just below to import 
these same settings that you may have saved. That pretty much wraps it up for the basics of the profiles and print settings. And again, we always invite everyone to attend our live videos because in those we go more in depth into what each different setting can do and where it's located.